Law enforcement at every level says the illegal drug trade is one of the biggest contributors to crime. Tonight we take you to South America where Liz Reyes shows us the behind the scene fight that's helping the metro New Orleans area. Liz? Well, it is a fight that starts thousands of miles away in the jungles of Colombia. Tonight we show you the extremes taken by both sides in this battle and how it affects you in our special report from the farm to the arm. Hard illegal drugs on the streets are playing a major role in crime, according to the DEA. And they say crack cocaine and heroin are two of the biggest threats to the Metro New Orleans area, fueling the violent crimes with drug dealers fighting over control of territories and users committing crimes to get their next hit to inhale or inject. The vast majority of all crimes that are committed uh, at some point have some correlation or, or is directly connected to illegal drugs. Recently, the yeah. DEA received a tip from the Colombian National Police in South America that led DEA agents to a ship docked at the port of New Orleans, Napoleon Avenue Wharf, where they seize 450 kilograms of cocaine. It's a substantial hit uh, in somebody's pocket. Street value? At least $10 million of drugs removed from New Orleans neighborhoods. Jimmy Fox, a special agent in charge of the DEA in New Orleans, says most of the drugs seized in this area are from Houston, but they originate here in South America. These pictures taken in the jungles of Colombia show the types of makeshift manufacturing labs used to produce the drugs, which are transported mostly by boat to Mexico. From there, the drugs cross the border to Texas and eventually to Houston by smugglers who will use any means necessary such as a submarine confiscated near the Ecuador-Colombian border packed with cocaine, and the puppies from Colombia discovered in New York implanted with liquid heroin. And almost 100 percent of the cocaine seized east of the Mississippi is reportedly produced in Colombia. The top DEA man based in Bogota says behind-the-scenes intelligence from Colombia has been significant. Based on the work that they are, they're working the investigation. I could connect that dot to something going on in New York, something going on in New Orleans, something going, in, going on in Gulfport. Bergman says few people realize that Colombia is now a key partner for American law enforcement in the war on drug cartels. No longer is it the violence-plagued nation as was the case during the days of drug lord Pablo Escobar. Here in Bogota, Colombia, many people will tell you they are tired of hearing about the nation's connection to illegal drugs. While they admit it is a problem, they say it paints all Colombians with a negative brush. And they say the reality is those drug labs are thousands of miles away from big cities like this where most Colombians live. And it is far away from the big cities deep in the Colombian jungles where actions are impacting American lives. Through this mock demonstration, the Colombian National Police show how they move in on drug labs. It is a method that's reportedly reducing the amount of drugs leaving the country. And this is the National Police Chief of Colombia, General Oscar Naranjo, hey, <laughs> who the DEA credits with a major role in the success of intercepting the transportation of illegal drugs. This was him recently in Orlando at the International Association of Chiefs of Police Convention. He is world-renowned for his expertise on dismantling drug cartels because he spent the past 30 years doing just that. He now heads up the 170,000-strong Colombian police force that's targeting drug smugglers. His country's partnership with the DEA is one that dates back decades and one both sides credit with disrupting the flow of drugs from the cocoa farms in Colombia to the arms of American addicts and potential new customers. I can say without a doubt that the amount of drugs coming out of Colombia headed for the United States is continuing to go down. And what we have seen is that the Latin American drug traffickers are now looking for new routes and new markets for their drugs. He says instead of only South American routes, drug Drug smugglers are now seeking new routes via West Africa and Europe to reach the U.S. because of Colombia's relentless destruction of the farms which produce the drugs. Fields of plants including marijuana and cocoa leaves are common in parts of the rural hills, except here it's grown and controlled by the police 
and it's now a testing ground. This is the acid water. A perfect incubator, you can say, to learn what best destroys these plants. This summer, DEA agents learned firsthand how aerial spraying is eradicating more of the drug lord's crops, while at the same time not harming anything else around it. Ya no fumigamos solamente desde las aeronaves. In addition to the aerial uh, spraying that goes on, we have people on the ground who go in and actually pull out the plants. And so by combining these two efforts, we have been able to be much more successful. And I should emphasize that over the last eight years, the United States and Colombia have captured over 1,000 of the leaders of the different drug cartels all of them wanted by the U.S. justice system, and they have been extradited to the United States to face trial. The result? Colombia's worldwide cocaine production has reportedly dropped nearly in half, from 94 percent to 52, according to the general. Clearly, it is a priority for the newly elected president, Juan Manuel Santos, who had this to say when I asked him in Bogota. What are you going to do to help win that fight that everyone's concerned about? Keep on fighting. Keep on fighting. It is a fight that's now shifted to Mexico. DEA agents say Mexico's drug traffickers now control most of the U.S. drug markets. Much of what ends up in the Metro New Orleans area is connected to the big cartels based in Mexico. The Colombian National Police are also sharing their knowledge, training thousands of Mexican police on that new battleground. It is a fight that also stresses the educational component such as this exhibit at the downtown Old U.S. Mint, which showcases the dangers of illegal drug use. As perception of harm increases, drug use decreases. Police, police, police. The trend law enforcement hope continues for the sake of the countless lives affected by the drug-fueled violent crime in the metropolitan New Orleans area. And as for the local drug bosses, agents say through ongoing investigations, they know there are several middle to large scale cocaine traffickers. They're based locally here, living in some pretty nice neighborhoods too, who now directly deal with the Mexican cartels. But with the Colombian police now working to help Mexico, it is expected that will translate into more tips locally to crack down on this illegal trade. Hmm. Uh, so besides drug busts, how do they measure, how does law enforcement measure how many drugs are actually making it into the country? Well, one way they they know that they can see in certain trends is that if all of a sudden the price automatically goes up, it means the supply has gone down in some areas and they're making some dents. Um, but their key thing right now is really focusing on trying to, to see if they can translate some of the successes they've had in Colombia to Mexico because that really has become the biggest threat as we see in the border towns uh, in other countries uh, and, and here in the U.S. That is a big threat now to us and they have clearly infiltrated our market as well. And you said that police force is a hundred and... Yeah, it's like Atlanta, New York combined, 170,000 police incredible. officers on one force. The entire country is uh, operated under this one man who is uh, directing all of them. Goodness. All right. All right. Thanks, Liz. Thank you. The